I'm Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle, the Christian girl's guide to modern dating. We're here to help you date with confidence while honoring the Lord and to show you that your identity and contentment are in Christ. We're going to give you the tools that you need to date successfully and be set up well for success in a godly marriage. If you've ever felt like you didn't really belong with any of the extremes in dating today, well, you're not alone. Neither did we. And that's why we're here looking for the middle. Hello, friends. Welcome to the season premiere of season eight. Well, that's right. It's so weird because we already recorded yes. at least episode one more two? episode after this. And so I forget that this one's going first. Yeah. I need to make a note of that for my editing. So oh, yeah. I don't <laughs> yeah. do them out of order. Yeah. We've kind of messed with Bethany's editing schedule. Everything's off. Everything's off. off. But we'll get there. It's fine. But we're so excited about this episode and some of us are a little nervous apparently yeah i just got really nervous right before we hit record <laughs> because if you listen to the end of the 12 days of Couchcast back in december you know what's happening today or if you read the description like me who reads descriptions of everything before i watch I or listen things if people actually read those i type some oh, i've yeah. wanted to like type something for one one time that's like completely unrelated please do and just see if anybody actually looks at please it please do <laughs> except i always use those in the newsletter so if you do something i'll random, get you a real one <laughs> Okay, great. <laughs> um, but we have my fiance, Kevin, here today to talk to us. Say hi, Kevin. Hi, everybody. <laughs> my name is Kevin. He's pumped. <laughs> I'm nervous. It's going to be a great time. Um, and I get to ask all the questions. Yes, it's going to be it's going to be something. Um, he did not tell me any of his answers, and I was trying to get him to, so that probably makes me more nervous. Not probably. <laughs> definitely. Um, what dirt do you have on her that she I is have, so worried about? I have plenty about? of dirt okay, on Kristen. Okay, good. So if you, you can like feed me some questions. If you have some things you want me to ask to like set you up, Oh, yes. Know. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, dear gracious. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get into that, let's talk about housekeeping real quick. Okay. Our newsletter starts up again this week so that goes out tomorrow we'll be sending you all kinds of fun resources other podcast episodes the hallmark movie of the month all the fun things about that yes so be sure and go sign up for that if you haven't already you can do that on our website lookingforthemiddle.com or at our instagram bio we're on instagram at lftm underscore podcast which if you're not following us over there you should go do that because the day that we post this episode, we will be posting our engagement video on the podcast. Oh, that's right. Because I promised you that a long time ago, and then I did it. <laughs> that was a fun day. It was a fun day. It was a very that fun day. That was his turn to be nervous. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. There are a couple, you were oblivious. Oh, my gosh. There were a couple <laughs> pictures. I'm like, oh, buddy, looks like he's he's going to lose it. And But he did great. So we'll post that on Instagram. So be sure to follow us to go check that out as well. Any other house? Oh, tell them about the Facebook. Part. Oh, yeah. I'm going to work really hard in the week between now and when we release this to get our Facebook group ready for you guys. We have this page that you guys all like, whatever, but we're trying to create. You guys had asked for more of a community type space. So we are going to get a Facebook group going and we will have it. We will at least have the Facebook group ready. Oh, by yeah, the time definitely. This airs. Yeah. We're probably still going to be ironing out some details of what that looks like. So if you guys have ideas or things that would be helpful as far as like community goes for you, let us know. Um, we, you know, we can be involved a lot or a little if y'all want to just have at it and hang out together. That's fine. Or we can jump on there. So whatever, whatever y'all want is what we want to do. We want it to be helpful. Yeah. We'll so, have that in the newsletter too, which is another reason yes, you should sign up there for you that. Go. So all the things. Okay. It's going to be fun. All right, my question we, yeah, of the day. I think that's everything. Yes, before we jump in, what was my question of the day? It took you 20 minutes to find it. Yes, Don't I know. Oh, I no, 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 no. Here it is. Okay, what is the... <laughs> Sorry, I did struggle today. <laughs> what is the worst gift you've ever received? Ooh, that's Ooh. a great question. If y'all want to think, I know mine right off the top. Okay. Hopefully it's not something I've got. It's not. It's not something you got me. <laughs> so I was turning... 13 or 14 i can't remember i was or no i think i was 16 yeah yeah, yeah. it was my 16th birthday okay so i'm you know cool now quote unquote i've never been cool apparently but i thought i was cool and i was getting my license like this is gonna be a great birthday and i have some friends over and then family to hang out eat food and open presents and my grandmother not my nanny my other grandmother um she will never listen to this so i can say this um <laughs> gave me a singing stuffed sunflower that sang you are my sunshine 
Okay. Maybe it was earlier than 16, but it was the most embarrassing thing ever. Cause I literally opened it. I'm like, I am a teenager. I am like <laughs> supposed to be getting like clothes and like iPods. You were just and, too cool. For yeah. That. And I'm, li- I'm like, I looked at my mom like, what do I do? Like, what do I do with this? And I turn, she's like, turn it on. I'm like, oh, dear gracious, it turns on. And so I turn it on and it starts like, like dancing back and forth and singing. And then from then on out, my nanny, my grandmother that I'm like super close to, like, that's a joke now where she gets me oh, wow. gifts with you are my sunshine related to it. But I was so mortified. And all my friends, like you could tell they just pity me. It was terrible. Do you still have it? Oh, gosh, no. Oh, that would have been amazing. So this was in front of your friends. Oh, yeah. All my friends. My siblings, my pa- my poor mom looked so pitiful. Like, was like, oh, dear gracious, I don't know what to tell her. It was awful. That I was so embarrassed. Awful. So, I, that was mine. I'm wow. trying to think. Do you have one I that do. comes to mind? Go ahead. I'm yeah, struggling so over here. This is a gift that I received multiple years in a row. Um, also from my grandmother. Uh, <laughs> See, y'all, are, my grandmother listens to this. Oh, oh yeah. So, well, oh, she does. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, my grandmother's passed away, so I know she won't be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're safe. We're safe. Oh um, uh, so when I was a kid, we, we went to McDonald's a lot. And as a child, I loved McDonald's. But as you get older, you realize McDonald's is not great. <laughs> And Wait, McDonald's is not great? It's not super oh. great. Yeah, I'm sorry kidding, to I'm just kidding. burst your bubble that <laughs> They're thing. They're fries. I love McDonald's. The fries are fries. Good. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just don't go a ton. Maybe once every like two months I'll go to McDonald's. Um, but is almost, that just on Sunday when Chick-fil-A is closed? Usually. Yes. Okay, just Big checking. Chick-fil-A guy over here. Um, <laughs> but my grandmother, like every year I was in high school, like before she passed away, she got me a McDonald's gift card for almost every single holiday. Like birthday, <laughs> Christmas, because I used to like it as a kid, yeah. and I just hated it because I never used them. Oh, that's so sad. It was very sad. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't think I knew that. That's yeah. funny. Oh. I'm I trying mean, to think. Now, who's the nothing. one that's gonna have to get the? Stuff I know, but like, cut out now. There's stuff that like I get is, but I like weird stuff as gifts because that thing is very practical gift. Yeah, person. so like if someone gave you like socks, you might be like, well, this is a horrible gift. I'm like, oh my word, I don't have to spend money on socks. Did like, your, I love those kinds of things. Did your grandparents ever get you underwear for Christmas? Nope. Okay, my grandparents. That would be <laughs> a weird. Yeah. That's a weird gift. Mm-hmm. That is yes, objectively it weird. It was so awful. I would always leave it in the bag and be like. Always? As in this happened more than once? Oh, every year. Like growing up, we got socks and underwear from my grandparents. My grandparents gave me a bicycle when I was younger. Well, good for you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> clearly <laughs> we had different experiences. But yeah, it was so, I would look at my mom and be like, oh my God, okay, well, I guess. I mean, I I'll use this, but I don't want to be like, hey, guys, look at my underwear. Like, it's <laughs> yeah, so no. embarrassing. Oh, yeah. No. Wait, they brought it to a birthday party, like, for you to open? Oh, it was for Christmas. So as oh, we're like, all you're opening fam- Christmas presents, at, but all the cousins got it. So we all knew oh, it was like So a, it was like this unspoken yeah, thing. Yeah, like, that- oh, did you get your underwear? <laughs> yeah, I got mine too. Like, it was the same thing. I literally can't, I can't think, of, I can't think of anything. I'm the worst when it comes I feel to like gifts. I've, they I've, don't really... I feel like I've told enough stories if you want to back okay, out. Okay, I'm just going to p- move on. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Like, Everybody pray for Kristen. <laughs> Are you taking notes of things not to give her? Yeah. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. He's a good gift giver. That's good. So he's done well so far. <laughs> so far. Wow. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. yeah you're good. Expectations are high. Yes. Seriously. Exactly. I don't know. Right. Sounds like they might not be compared yeah, that's to true. these really? other things. If you just get me something I will that doesn't sing and it's, <laughs> you know, not embarrassing for me to open in front of other people, then it's fine. Perfect. I'm okay. on it. There you go. There okay. You go. So are y'all ready to go here? I've got ten questions. Ready as ooh, I'll ever be. Ooh. And my thought going into this was I'll ask and then for a lot of them, we'll hear your side and then your side or Oof. like, or vice versa, whatever. But like, mm-hmm. I want to hear the differing perspective. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. I know all the story because I've been privy to it all along, but the good people out in podcast world do not. I literally had so, to remind myself of that. I'm like, yes, they know nothing. They don't. So go back to the beginning, either when you met or when you re met, I don't know, but Somebody go. Tell us about that. You go first. Well, first I want to say it was very hard to even get on this podcast. (laughs) 
I mean, I'm a youth pastor, and I can speak at a lot of schools or get interviewed. This has been very difficult to get on this podcast. I've been wanting to get, to be a be a guest for a long time, but they've said no. So I'm, I'm very excited to be here. We really walk in. To have you. Kevin's like, I gotta wife somebody up before I even get on here. And Bethany was like, actually, if you just never dated her at all, you could have gotten on. Yeah. Here. So I was caught in a no win situation to yeah. get on the podcast. Basically. Yeah. So how did we meet? Do you? I can answer the like the first part of it. Yeah, you go. First. Yeah. So, go um, so I get recruited to play basketball um, after my senior year of high school. Uh, so I went to Johnson University, Tennessee, to play basketball. So it's like four hours from my hometown um, in Georgia, and I get a roommate there named Brett. And so me and Brett were. I didn't realize y'all were roommates. Yep. I knew y'all played together. Yep. Oh, so me Edwards. and Brett. Okay. Uh, we met at Johnson. He's also from Georgia, and we were just roommates. And we played both on the basketball team. Uh, we're good friends that year. And actually, Brett's sister is Kristen. <laughs> uh, so that is how we first met. Uh, how many years ago was that now? Seven. seven? I want to say seven years ago. Seven and a half. Yeah. So uh, Brett would often drive. We were both from Georgia. Very kind of very close together. So he would often drive you know, me back home so, you know, I could go see my family. He could go see his family. Um, and Kristen would come up with her parents to games. And so that's how we originally met. Do you remember actually meeting me? I don't, See, actually. I don't either. I don't remember meeting you. So either. y'all really made an impression. Of, like, or like, At first, there was like, no. no. It was like, not even a blip. Well, and what's weird, too, because we talk about, um, I'll tell a little part, extra part of the story in a second, but... Kevin, we're only two and a half years apart, so I'm two and a half years older, but he redshirted his freshman year, so he was in college okay. for five years, yeah. Yeah. and I was about to graduate college after his freshman year, so we only, or I guess I graduated in the middle of your first yep, year. you did. So, because I graduated early, so even though our age gap isn't that far apart, our seasons of life were very oh, spread out, okay. and so it really didn't click like... Oh, I'm like, oh no, you're my little brother's roommate. I was roommate. like, an option. yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. I was just thinking, like, oh, it's my, you know, good friend, my roommate's older sister. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it didn't really click, but then the end of their freshman year, this is this is <laughs> my first memory of Kevin. Um, Melanie, many of y'all know Melanie. Uh, if you've been listening, well, she threw me a surprise birthday party when I turned 22. And I'm very easy to surprise. So it was <laughs> very gullible. Very gullible. Very easy to surprise. And so that weekend that the party was on, Brett came home from college for the weekend and brought Kevin and then two of their other friends, Aaron and Kenny. And because Brett and I are so close, we always hung out with each other's friends. So they became my stalling <laughs> yeah, people. We were, like, we're not ready yet. Yeah, like the distraction for the day to get me out of the house. They were going to the mall. They're like, Kristen, why don't you come to the mall with us? And then I thought that night we were all just going out to dinner for my birthday. And so I was like, oh yeah, I'll go hang out with the mall with y'all. Like, that's fine. Melanie told me she had to work. Like, she slept over in our house. I literally <laughs> made her leave. She's like, I don't have to work. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go to the mall with them all day. We have a great time. Well, apparently right before we... I wanted us to leave. My mom calls Brett and is like, we're not ready. We need y'all to stall. I think somebody wasn't there yet. Like, my I think dad we were had ready. the pizza. Yeah, that's he was what it was. Yeah, we were waiting right. for a, Yeah, that's yeah, what it was. We were all, so, yeah. Yeah, so my mom's like telling Brett we need to stall. So Brett's relaying this to the, <laughs> the boys and Kevin goes, I got this. Don't worry. <laughs> He, y'all, I wanted to murder him this, this afternoon. <laughs> this is Chris's first memory now. Um, literally. <laughs> so he first tells me they all need to go use the bathroom before we leave, which I should have known something was up because guys don't do that. Girls do that where they use the bathroom all at the same time. Guys don't. But like they you all, said, very gullible. Yeah. Very so gullible. Go, they all go to the bathroom. Then they decide they want to go buy these socks that they saw in the first store. That On we the other to. side of the other mall. side of the mall. I'm like, okay, fine. Let's go. Then Kevin, I can just see her. Oh my oh, yeah. gosh! Well, then Kevin's like, "Oh, I want to get a cookie before we leave." But this should have been foreshadowing in my future because he is like, "Oh, the Great American Cookie." I'm like, "Kevin, we're eating in 45 minutes." He's like, "No, no, no, because it'll be fine." And I'm like, "I, you don't need a cookie." And he gets three cookies and a large Dr Pepper, and I'm like, "You're gonna ruin your dinner, and we're gonna be late." And so he's like, "Oh no, it's fine, it's fine," and he can't really tell him no in that moment and so because he's not having it so i'm like oh my gosh well then we're like okay we're finally gonna leave and he's like oh crap Kristen, i left my sunglasses in brookstone where we had spent way too much on the time other side of the mall in the massage chairs yes on the other side of the mall i'm like you've got to be kidding me i'm like kevin go get the sunglasses and we have got to go we're gonna be late whole time sunglasses are in kenny's pocket 
So they just leisurely walk to the end of the mall. I call mom and Melanie, who I don't know are together, give them the same rant, all this stuff. So then we finally leave the mall, get to my grandparents' house where I thought we were meeting, and I walk in and like 20 of my friends and my family are all there. And I was like, oh. But in the video, it's funny. You can hear after I walk in, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then everybody kind of looks at Brett and he's like, it was Kevin. And so it's fun now that like I have that video and I have that memory, but I was, oh my gosh, that, what a day that was. But that was my first memory of yes. him. But then fast forward. So then fast forward. forward. Yeah. Well, before we fast forward, oh. um, so that same weekend, I don't remember if it was oh, after. It was that night. I think it was that night. Yeah. So we all went to your old high school to like play basketball and just kind of oh. shoot around, do like a little shooting contest. And so we ended up splitting up teams and Kristen was on the other team and Kristen like I don't know if you guys know this she is a good basketball player like she can shoot a basketball and we were using a guy's ball and she was like this night she was just on fire she was killing us I think this was God because I don't think I've ever shot that well in my entire life yeah and so that's this, this was my first moment where I was like oh like this is kind of attractive, like a <laughs> little, little, little small crush there because she was beating all of us. And I've always wanted somebody who was athletic. So, but still I was like, oh, this is just, you know, my, you know, my roommate and my close friend's older sister. Yeah. So yeah, then we fast forward. Yeah. Yeah. So he had, so technically he liked me first is what we're learning. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sure. That's um, what we're taking. <laughs> so then fast forward over the next seven years we run into each other periodically at basketball games and stuff like that but like i dated other people he dated other people i ended up transferring schools. yeah he transferred to a different school um so we followed each other on social media apparently i unfollowed him at one point i don't remember but then i followed him back i don't remember any of that but (laughs) he does so (laughs) we get to last october and or no i guess two octobers ago yeah, too. Yeah. October 2020. And I'm sitting in my living room with my mom and Brett. And we're just chatting. My mom, you know, is always trying to set me up with somebody. And she just doesn't want me to be alone, which I do appreciate. <laughs> but it's always I'm like, Mom, I don't want to be set up with, you know, so-and-so or this random person. And I'm scrolling through Instagram while we're talking. And a picture of Kevin comes up on my Instagram. And I asked Brett. I'm like, Brett, what's Kevin Cave up to these days? And... My mom's like, oh, now that is somebody <laughs> that we could set Kristen up with. Brett's like, yeah, I think he's a youth pastor. Like, he got, you know, he's coaching basketball. I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> and he's cute and he's tall. So we're checking boxes That's right funny. off the So I was like, okay, well, I'd be fine if you set me up with him, which I never say. <laughs> and so Brett takes his time, my mom pestering him the whole time. I'm completely oblivious to all of this. But finally reaches out and asks Kevin if he would be interested. Wait, wait. Brett did. Brett did. Yeah, okay. Yes. Brett reached out to Kevin, asked if he'd be interested in going out with me, and it turns out Kevin was actually going out with another girl at the time. Do you want me to share the full details you, of this? You, you, it's your podcast. Okay. Uh, it was my old roommate that he was going out with. <laughs> we went on one date. Went on one date. Uh, the way it was communicated, I, it seemed like it was more than one date, which was not anybody's fault. I just took it. So I took that very hard. Well, I think at the time it was well, kind of was, in between because you were, we were together and you were like, oh, I think he's planning to go out with her again. Was yeah. What was conveyed to us. Yes. And so we were like, oh, yeah, well, I was scratch that you. off. Yeah. That's right. I was at dinner with Bethany yeah. and Lindsay and a bunch of people. And so I got really annoyed and <laughs> I was like, got my hopes up again. And it just gets the rug gets ripped off under me. And of course, it's going out with somebody I know. Like, this is so awful. <laughs> And, and if Brett then, hadn't drug his feet, uh, no, then it wouldn't be exactly, a problem. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so I just kind of like, it just kind of, you know, we move on and I never know what happens with them. And then six months later, do you want to tell this part of the story? Yeah. No, you got it. No, 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 no you no, tell. No, you tell. I'm talking tell. too much. You got to tell this part. <laughs> well, uh, six months later, um, you know, I was at a point in my, I, I was going to answer this in another question, but I can answer now. Okay. Uh, like I was in a point in my life where I was like, you know, I really want to find like a godly woman who, you know, you can just see Jesus all over her life and, you know, following Kristen on social media, uh, you know, for you know six, seven years, I was like, this girl seems like she's, she's like, she's got it. And so I was like, I mean, what, what's the harm of going on a date? Like, and so I was kind of excited about it. So I just randomly DM'd her on Instagram and I was like, uh, hey, would you like to go on a date? Maybe Friday night at, I don't remember if I said like six o'clock or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and then you responded. Mm-hmm. Very quickly. Uh, well, not <laughs> quickly enough because I called my mom. I was going to say, I knew about it before yeah, you responded. Like, mom, guess what? She's like, have you responded? I'm like, no. She's like, get off the phone and message him back. <laughs> um, and so it ended up, I was going out of town that weekend, and then he had his uh, camp with his youth group the next week. So it was a couple weeks before we went out. But I said yes, and we went on our first date uh, like a week and a half later. Mm-hmm. And here we are. Here we so, are. That was a very long answer, but <laughs> it's quite a long story. So would you have reached out to her if Brett hadn't said anything? Did that, like, plant the seed, Ooh. or would you still, like... Was oh, it yeah. still? So, what do you question. think? That is a good question. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. So I don't even know if you know this, Bethany. Oh, I don't know. Um, I'll so, act surprised. Like October, like 2020. Yeah. Like they're, you know, in the living room doing their whole yeah, family yeah. thing. And then Brett reaches out to me, like, in December. Yeah. And it was actually in, like... I don't know if it was October. I want to say it was like October or September. Yeah. I remember talking to my best friend okay. and uh, Jason, and we were just talking one day, you know, about, hey, are you interested in anybody? He's asking me if I'm interested in anybody. And I'm like, well, there is a girl like I know. Yeah. I haven't seen in a long time who seems really godly. But honestly, and it was Kristen. Uh-huh. And so it was around the same time I think she was kind of, you know, okay. searching me on Instagram and, but I Stalking, was really searching, whatever. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was really hesitant to reach out because me and Brett hadn't talked in a long time. Okay. And like, you know, bro code, guy code, you know, you don't want to like just try to date their in. sister, you know? So I was really hesitant. And then so once Brett messaged me, I was like, oh my gosh, like he, okay. he's like offering that? Like, that is so kind. Okay. And that was really a big thing for me got it mm-hmm. that that clears that up so okay so then first date y'all went to chilies mm-hmm. okay yep and i mean it was just dinner like you yeah. went to dinner mm-hmm. and then, then you went home okay yeah so five well, and a half hours oh, no, no, i'm just saying it wasn't like you went, yeah. to, like, yeah. you yeah, went yeah. to dinner yeah we were okay. at, we were at chilies for five and a half hours chatting <laughs> yeah it's great so coming out of that I mean, since y'all knew each other way back, like, so then what were your perceptions or like thoughts going into it since you already kind of knew each other, like beforehand, we can talk about coming out of it after, yeah, but like yeah. going into it then, like what, what were you, th- what, what were you thinking going into it? You want me to go first? Yes. Um, I yes, was ner- do tell us what you were thinking. Yeah, I was a nervous <laughs> wreck. Um, so if y'all listened to last season and you heard me tell the story about almost throwing up in a Lowe's parking lot before a first date, that was before my first date with Kevin. Um, also, when I was pacing in my apartment with Lauren and Lindsay for hours before I left, that was also before my first date with Kevin. So I was very nervous. Um I don't know, like, there was part of it that was nice in the sense of, like, I did know him, so it wasn't like I'm going in blind. Yeah. So, I liked that I knew him, and I wasn't really worried about, like, him being a different person than what he had portrayed on social media or whatever. But I think I'm so bad at getting my hopes up too Mm. soon, and from everything I knew about him and what I could gather from his social media, that was you know kind of true about his life as of recent he just seemed to literally check everything like i went this is embarrassing but i went <laughs> on hit to like his college basketball roster to see how tall he was and i'm like oh my word he's six two which he's actually six three which is literally the perfect height um in my mind so i'm like this is too good and if this doesn't work i'm gonna be very upset <laughs> because this because is just- he's six three and a, a lot of other things. Oh, okay. but that was a, <laughs> just that, checking. That was yeah. y'all know how important height is to me. Um, but yeah, I was a nervous wreck more so just because it seemed really promising. Mm-hmm. What I from what I knew about him, and I was really worried that I was going to you know show up and there was going to be some fatal issue that didn't work, and then we'd be back to the drawing board. But there was a sense of peace of like, okay, I know him. I like. I'm not going in to talk to a stranger and it makes the conversation easier too, because we sat down and he was like, okay, how's Brett? How's Danielle? Right. You know, how's, you know, the catch up is an easy, an immediate thing to like talk about. Exactly. It wasn't like, so what do you like to do for fun? (laughs) You know, what's your family like? (laughs) Yeah. It's like he already had so much context. So that was nice. Yeah. But that was what I was thinking. So yeah. What was your, 
your thoughts going into well, it. Well, I did not almost throw up in the Lowe's parking Good. lot. Um, <laughs> you I, only need one. Like, I even yeah, yeah. Texted a, a relationship like, only needs one person right. doing that. Well, I even texted him. I was like, are you nervous? He's like, no. And I'm like, oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really nervous at all. Um, but I was like excited because it did, it did seem like so many things aligned well and like it could possibly work out because like I saw, oh, I coach basketball. She coaches basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, she's loves ministry, uh, worked at a church. Like I work at a church. I'm a youth pastor. Uh, she has a, you know, a, a, a dating podcast. And so just a lot of things seem to align. And so I was just excited to like, I hadn't seen her in a long time. So yeah. I was excited to like just... You know, the possibility that like it could work out and yeah. i like chili so i'm like this is gonna be fun <laughs> <laughs> okay so t talk about um you were supposed to go out on a friday originally right <laughs> yeah and that got moved to a or you were supposed to go out on saturday yeah, saturday, saturday and it got to moved monday. to monday yeah because you were at youth yeah, camp so, right yeah i was so at a... i've heard her side of yeah that those two days <laughs> Yep. Which we'll have her tell in a minute, but from, from your perspective, why did you need to move it? Yeah, yeah. Do you not know? Well. Okay, you know something. Okay, so, yeah, so I went. For the I, sake of the, the people, collective The you. people out there. Sure, yeah. Yes. I took my, my youth group and some uh, small group volunteers uh, down to Florida to Big Stuff. And it was such a fun trip. So I took about 30 people to Big Stuff on this youth camp for a week. And... <laughs> I am a huge extrovert. I love camps. I worked at a couple camps in college. And so I like, we made the plans of like, okay, I get back Friday. We should go out Saturday. <laughs> but this, the camp was great, but it was very like emotionally draining yeah. from, you know, students who, you know, were having a tough time. You know, the messages were very deep and very like, very exhausting. Uh, and a lot of the students were hitting home with the messages. And so I had to do like a lot of counseling that week. <laughs> and so I'm a huge extrovert. I don't say no to hanging out with people, but I was so like just drained yeah. that I was like, I cannot go on a date <laughs> Saturday, yeah. especially like a first day. <laughs> yeah. And even like, so I, I postponed our date. And even like a friend called me on Saturday. He was like, hey man, do you want to hang out? I was like, no, please don't come over. Like, please don't. Sorry, man. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like anything bad. It was just like, I am just drained. Can we please do like yeah. Monday? And I gave her a date like, yeah. hey, how about Monday? And she said yes. Yes. Yeah. Which I think was a very smart move. Thank you. Thank which you. is in fact what I told Kristen. I was like, he gave you another day. Yes. Yeah, so what, did, what was Kristen's response when you said that? Well, she told me that was fine, but apparently she was really nervous. Okay. I'm just, <laughs> I I'm learned like, later. I'm just wondering what she actually told you. Yeah. Now, fill us in what was behind your, oh, that's fine. Yeah. I did tell you that I understood. Do you yeah. remember? Because yeah. I'm the introvert in the relationship. Yeah. So I get needing that time to recharge. <laughs> but him having told me he was an extrovert, I was like, he shouldn't need this time to recharge. <laughs> no. The only reason I panicked a little bit is because a previous relationship I had been in, that happened a lot where dates got canceled and postponed but vaguely postponed yeah and so that's literally what bethany told me was like he gave you another day at another time like there are plans it's not just like oh i have to cancel sorry we'll do it some other time yeah and um her and my mom both gave me the same advice like it's not your past relationship this is a different guy that you understand the situation you obviously want him to feel good and like himself when you're on the date mm -hmm. you don't want him to be exhausted um Cause that's not fun for him or for you or for anybody. So that it was more based on my past experience that I freaked yeah. out a little bit, but it ended up working out great. Yeah. So. And that's what I wanted to kind of bring it around to of don't like, don't be too quick to bring in the past when it's not really the same, mm -hmm. you know, or you have seen a pattern of something in someone else. Yeah. So then the first time someone new does that same thing, well, you're infusing the pattern that someone else had onto them as opposed to giving them a chance to see whether or not it's actually a pattern or it just happened one time. You know, yeah. like this was a fluke, you know, but if you had said, oh, well, no, this happened before, forget it. Yeah. You know, that's all I was going to Yeah, that's a good Trying point. to bring it around yeah. to. Good dating advice. Yeah. Wow. You know, we've been doing this for a minute. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then, this may be kind of the same answer, but we're going to ask it anyway. So after the first date, what was your perception? Like coming out of it was it the same what you like because y'all had what f what was that f four five six years ago? prior was the birthday party five years uh, like that that one weekend six, six, six yeah. years ago okay yeah. so 
a lot happens in that time. So yeah. obviously you're both coming into it, but that's all you know about the other person. So coming out of it, what were your perceptions? No, you go first. No, yeah. no you should go first. Yeah, you should go first um, on this question. I mean, I think like, like I said, I think it was, I never really thought about Kevin in a dating context early on. And so, um, when I like, I remember like walking through the parking lot and he got out of his car and I was like, Oh shoot. He's like, he's cute. And he has grown up. And we like, not like that makes me sound old, but like, you know what I mean? Like, Stop looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just listening. I'm just listening here. Makes I you just sound old? Not old, but like like I was a lot older than him. Oh, okay. And I'm really not that much yeah. older than him. But I think afterwards I was like, okay, this is, you know, he's confident and he's mature and he has got his crap together and he not that he didn't have any of that before, but he was a college freshman the last time I like really interacted with him. Mm in any sort of like length of time yeah and so yeah totally different life stage by yeah, that point exactly. yeah that makes sense yeah and so you know he's working in ministry now and he's coaching and he's doing all this stuff and it, it felt more like we were in the same place whereas mm. we were both going into very different seasons the when we first met if that makes sense yeah. so like yeah. that was really um exciting for me to be like okay yeah like this is this is what i figured would be the case based on like social media and stuff like that and like talking to Brett and kind of what he knew but um yeah I was I was very impressed let's just leave it at that when I left I was like oh shoot I'm in trouble (laughs) um he's great and I'm already smiling like an idiot and it's been one date so that was my did that make any sense I feel like I yeah no it did yeah okay your turn oh it's my turn yeah um (laughs) So yeah, like I said, going into the date, I thought there was a good chance because of, you know, I'd seen like um, things on social media and what I knew about her and her family. Um, so like kind of going into the date, I wanted to see that like the boxes were checked. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, and the date went so well. The food was fantastic because uh, I like chilies. And <laughs> we were... Chilies yeah, is yeah. not paying. The yeah. yeah, is yeah. not yeah. sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to, we will. Yeah. Yeah. The two for 25 is great. Yeah. Um, but... <laughs> We were there for five and a half hours, and we got kicked out of Chili's because they had closed, and they said, you guys have to leave now. You're not <laughs> eating anymore. Yeah. So then we talked in the parking lot for a little bit, because the day started at 7, and we left at like 12, 20. Yeah. Um, but it went so well. Um, he's like, man, she checks all the boxes. Like, she's funny. She's pretty. Like, just everything was being checked, and I was like, wow, that was amazing. So I ended up, I was so confident, like right after the first date, I called my best friend, Jason. And well, at first I texted him in the parking lot, like, Hey, are you awake? It's 1220. <laughs> and he was, so he calls me immediately. And he's like, Hey man, what's up? You okay? I'm like, yes. And I, was, I told him, I was like, Hey man, get the notes out in your phone. And he's like, okay, this is a weird request. <laughs> and he didn't know I was on a date. And I said, Hey, write this date down and this time. Because I just like, I met my future wife. And I was so confident. He starts screaming. And it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, so like, he still has that in his phone of the day and the time, time I told stamped. him. Yeah, timestamp. So I was very confident yeah. going out of it. Yeah, so. I get like all like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that until he told me that right before he asked me to marry him, and so I didn't know any of that. Until oh, you he didn't know to- oh. that was in the spiel when he was proposing. Oh, okay, I thought I didn't realize you didn't know that. Yeah, I did not know that. Okay. He did not tell me that. So that was when I like start really getting teary in the video. Yeah. that's what he was saying. <laughs> so yeah, that was news to me. Oh, yeah. so cute. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think we've kind of covered at length now. Like we've got all the details of the meeting, the first date, all the things. Right? Is there yes. anything else you all were wanting to? share in that vein or did y'all get all your things out okay you so, go <laughs> yeah, yeah okay good. so let's move on i don't know that sounds weird but we're gonna let's talk about maybe some things we've learned just about relationships in general just like some things that might be helpful for the people listening if that makes sense mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so what have you and you can both answer this separately it doesn't have to be the same thing what have you learned though about relationships and i don't even mean just like dating relationships which is like relating to other people in general like what are some things or what's the biggest thing you've learned 
as a result of your relationship with each other? Your turn to go first. Okay, I can start <laughs> on this one. So, um, and like some of this isn't like things that I've just learned from like dating Kristen, but it's just good things that we did that mm. like really helps. Um, I think like I talk to you know a couple students in my youth group a ton all the time who just kind of jump into dating relationships and with friends. Like you need to take your time to like get to know the person. Mm-hmm. So it was very helpful that I have known her for so long, knew what her she was like, knew what her family was like. As I hear so many times, people jump into relationships and they're not equally yoked in an area of their lives, yeah. and it's like, oh, I shouldn't have jumped into this relationship. <laughs> in two weeks yeah um and so i thought that we did that really well because we had talked about a lot of things really early on and i just knew a lot about her so that was very helpful um and but over just the course of our relationship um you know one of the most important things in a dating relationship is just being selfless and i think me and kristen we're still both learning how to do that better (laughs) because at the core of every person is sin and self-centeredness and so it takes time and effort and energy and experience to constantly put the other person you know above yourself yeah I would agree with that I think I feel like I've learned so much about communicating from because it's so funny we get on this podcast like communication is key (laughs) and then you like actually implement that and you're like oh crap we were right (laughs) um but Something I picked up very early on is Kevin is a very good communicator, which I'm very grateful for. And I thought I was a pretty good communicator. And I think in some areas I am and in some areas I have a lot of work to do. Um, But just figuring out like you can't expect the other person to read your mind and you can't like expect them to have the same perspective and thoughts on everything as you do. And you don't you're not going to have a good experience if you're just making all those assumptions. And so it's been really good to, to figure out how, like how to communicate well and how to say things that I may be just assuming he knows. And I'm like, Oh, he doesn't know this. Like we've had so many conversations where I said, well, I was thinking this and he was like, Oh, I had no idea that you were (laughs) thinking that that's really helpful to know. I'm like, okay. (laughs) Um, so just, it's one thing to know it's important just because you've been told it's important and it's another thing to know it's important based on experience and so I think that's been something I've been learning a lot about is how to communicate well how to communicate in conflict everybody knows how much I love that situation (laughs) um how do you know keep your cool and be like rational and helpful and constructive and I think something that um it was pretty it was pretty far into a relationship at this point, but I think you and I had been arguing about something and my mom knew we were arguing, but she didn't really know the details, but she was like, Chris, if I can give you one piece of advice, remember that like, even if you're arguing, you both have the same goal, like you're on the same side. And that was such a good reminder to me of like, Hey, even if we have different perspectives or different opinions or we, you know, are, coming at things from a different side like we want the same thing and we're on the same side and we're a team and that's something I've tried to keep in the back of my head too or really on the forefront of my mind (laughs) not in the back of my head um as we're communicating and trying to figure things out so yeah that's probably one of the biggest things I would say I think that's I think that's good and it's good to be able to say okay yeah we say communication 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 and oh hey it's true it's true (laughs) okay so is there anything like you know, we all go into relationships in general with like preconceived notions about like what it's going to be like, what it's going to take, like what it involves. Was there anything that y'all, either of you brought in like a, an expectation or something you thought that you brought into it and you're you know, into your relationship, you're like, wow, that's not the case at all. And I don't mean a, like about the other person, but mm-hmm. just like how relationships work or anything like that. Do you want to go first? You want me to go first? But that's not the case at all. Hmm. Do you have something? Go for it. I thought of something. Um, <laughs> I thought it would be a lot easier to be selfless and submissive, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> just being really blunt. Because I, I don't have, like, a very... 
I have a deferring kind of personality. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, like, when people are like, oh, yeah, as a wife, you have to submit to your husband. I'm like, oh, that'll be a piece of cake for me. <laughs> um, and obviously, we're not married yet. But you get into this mindset of like, yeah. oh, when we make decisions, like, ultimately, like, yes, we're making them together. But, like, you are the lead here. And I have had more trouble accepting that than I thought. I would not because I don't <laughs> trust him or because I don't have faith in like his ability to make decisions because I absolutely do. But I think, and Bethany and I have talked about this a lot, how the, the longer you're on your own and you're mm-hmm. just used to taking care of yourself and only worrying about yourself, like you don't think about anybody else when you make decisions. And so it's an adjustment to think like, Oh, I have to think about another person or another yeah. person's input is required for this well and you don't think about how many decisions you actually yeah, make exactly like, because you have to make all of them yeah and then you're like oh oh there are a oh, lot wait. of these yeah and you don't seem to just think exactly the way i do about everything yeah. for some reason yeah. so <laughs> yeah he literally asked me that the other day he's like can you just not agree with me on everything and i'm like wouldn't that be nice like that would make it so much easier <laughs> but i really thought and this is that's probably just pride on my part but thinking like oh this will be so easy for me to be you know oh yeah honey whatever you want to do and it's like nope that's not (laughs) been like there have been some cases where like okay yeah like you want to do that let's do that I'm cool and there there have been other times like I did not want to do this at all I had this idea and you have this idea and I need to reframe my thinking and um remember not like put myself in my place but remember like what my role is Uh in you know walking into a marriage and that's been harder than I thought it would be okay. so that would be my answer thoughts comments questions concerns <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh dear what have i gotten myself into <laughs> i don't think i really have an answer for that one that's fine yeah, yeah. she'd be like oh it's turned out exactly she's as wonderful as i thought she would be <laughs> i don't want to lie <laughs> oh, hey. oh, that's hilarious gosh. Oh, okay, so next question, Kristen. This one is specifically for you. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Kevin. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you can have I'm a break. To listen. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Kristen, we've been doing this podcast for I don't know how long. We figured out the other day, three four, years, four years, almost three and a, yeah. So four in May is when we yeah, really started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or started brainstorming. So from those years. What and I put if anything. <laughs> oh, there are there are things. What Don't have worry. you taken from these years? I mean, because we've talked about how like we've talked about so many things and we've thought through so many things that we probably wouldn't have otherwise, just because it's kind of at the forefront of our mind a lot. So, mm-hmm. what are some things that you've taken from things we've talked about on here, or things we talked about in prep for an episode or whatever that has been helpful in y'all's dating relationship? I literally feel like I've been able to take like a, have like a college education's worth of dating (laughs) before (laughs) we got into this. Like, I feel really blessed that, because like you just said, there are so many things we've talked about over the years that if we had not done this podcast, like I wouldn't have ever thought of. Um, I think the, all the, the survey we did with the guys and Uh all the men tell all stuff has been super helpful just to kind of think from a guy's perspective because I only know how to think from a girl's perspective, obviously. (laughs) Um, but just thinking through, like we talk about this in the couch cast that's coming up in a couple weeks. So again, the recording out of order is really, (laughs) we're having to tease y'all, but about like common interests Mm, and, mm -hmm. um, this even hit me the other day where I can't remember what it was that you really wanted to go do something, but I really just wanted to sit and talk. And I'm like, no, this is important. Like he wants to go have like an experience. And that's something Mm. that like we've learned that guys like to do. Like they want to connect, but it's while they're doing something. Whereas girls, we just, Oh no, it was when we were talking about Valentine's day and you asked me what we were doing. Like, we're just going to sit around and talk. (laughs) And you're like, that's it. And I'm like, yeah, that's what we do. And you're like, that's weird. Um, I've never heard of that. Yeah. And cause like when you and I, like we like to do stuff together, like watch stuff together and we're connecting while we're doing something. Whereas I just like to sit and talk, which we do that some too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I would have never been able to differentiate that. I don't mm. think if we hadn't talked about stuff like okay. that. So I feel like that's a podcast in and of itself of all the things <laughs> I have like a, review of a cumulative review of what (laughs) I've learned since doing this. But I think what I love about this podcast is how much we've heard from y'all, our listeners, 
how this has like prompted conversations with your friends or how you've gotten your friends to listen and then y'all talk about episodes or you've talked um, to just people in your church about dating and sing- and I think that's what's going to prepare us better than anything mm-hmm. is just actually having conversations oh, about yeah. it. Um, because I know looking back, that's what's helped me. Because I mean, good grief, the number of hours Bethany and I have spent talking about <laughs> dating over the last four years like, <laughs> I wouldn't trade it. And I yeah. feel so good about obviously, I still have a lot to learn, but um, what we've been able to learn and kind of figure out over the last few years, I think, has helped a lot. Okay, so next question. Okay, so when Ooh, I'm excited and or one. how did each of you know that this was? air quotes the one and i put in parentheses here no one is allowed to say oh we just knew it's not an acceptable answer yeah so do tell Uh, because this is something we get asked all All the time the time how do you you know know? (laughs) yeah um so i had to i remembered this and then i had to kind of think not just scratch all that i don't like any of that So my moment did not happen after the first date, um, <laughs> like Kevin's did. But I you were slow to the party. <laughs> yes, which is funny because that's not nor- normally I think that I, is true. I've got it. Um, but I think there was a weight to this because it was so good, and mm-hmm. because after that first date, I was like, oh, this there wasn't some fatal like he's not part of a cult or something. Yeah. You know, the church is going in with the worst of expectations <laughs> that there's going to be something that keeps you from you know, moving forward, but we were, it was a couple months in and we were at his youth group. Cause I like volunteer and lead a high school girl, small group in his youth group. And, um, I had been coming for several weeks at that point, but he was, he always kind of comes to the back and during worship and all the students are up front, you know, they're playing music and then they're singing their, the few songs that we do before Kevin preaches. And he was in the back and like, he went off to pray before he preached, which is pretty normal. And then he was just like worshiping. And I just sat there and watched him and thought about how many years I have been praying for somebody who like the most important thing was that they had an obvious relationship with Jesus. That's, that's the phrase that I used. And I'm sitting here looking at this man who I'm dating and seeing him like, not just have like loved on these students when they got here. He has a really, he remembers everybody's name. It, it <laughs> blows my mind. Like I do not understand. He can meet somebody one time and remember their name forever. And I am so awful at that, but just makes these students feel so like loved and seen and cared for. And he, um, just puts his all into his ministry. And then like, I'm getting to watch him worship. And then I got to go, you know, he gets up and preaches like he does every week. And, it was just like, cause another thing I prayed for was a ministry partner and I'm sitting there like, this is what I've been asking for. I'm like, this, this is it. Like, this is the guy that I want to spend my life with and like, you know, grow my relationship with the Lord with and do ministry with. And, um, like I've got emotional just sitting there like watching him <laughs> and like, so I think one of the students was like, Kristen, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. Like, Don't talk I'm to me. good. Don't worry about it. It's well, fine. they probably were worried why you weren't worshiping yourself. Probably not. Watching I'm just somebody sitting, else. I was kind of standing in the back like, yeah, why are like, you staring point. at our youth pastor yeah. all weird? Cause you may have said this and I, how far into it was this? A couple months. Okay. 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 Um, so I think youth group had just kind of like kicked back up for a, little, a few weeks um, cause it was more sporadic during the summer where they okay. like more fun stuff. And so, but yeah, it was, that was it. And I was like, this, this is him. He is, he is, I'm very confident. Like this is who I want to be <laughs> with forever. So that was my moment. That's adorable. Oh, that Except for is. the creepy watching. Okay. Well, you didn't worship. have to make it creepy. <laughs> you did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, dang it. Oh, well. <laughs> So oh, you knew after the first date. Yes. Uh, just it seemed like so many boxes were checking yeah. off the things that I've wanted and prayed for for so long. Um, it just seemed very obvious after the first date. But then I remember two specific situations after where I was okay. kind of watching her. Okay. So kind of, but uh, not during worship. Because uh, <laughs> you were focused, because I was focused. on worshiping the Lord. Amen. Amen Good. Yeah. Preach it. Um, <laughs> but it was... So I don't remember exactly when it was, but we went to um, Six Flags, 
uh, during the summer. We took the youth group to Six Flags, uh, so there was about 30 students, uh, so Kristen went with me. And so we're just riding roller coasters the whole day, <laughs> and two of my students in the youth group who like I just love so much. They're they're the most passionate about Jesus. They're so fun. They're awesome. I've known them for almost two years, and they, you know, were just like they just connected themselves with Kristen so quickly. And I remember we were on a ride. I want to say I don't remember what ride it was, which kind of bothers me. But <laughs> I just remember um, y'all were in the line um, like three rows ahead of me, and I'm. So you're about to ride with them too, and I'm about to ride with some guys. And I just remember watching, like, kind of that creepy staring, <laughs> and they were asking you for advice on something. And you could just see you giving them advice and them listening. And it was just so cool to see, like, how engaged they were and, like, how much they liked you. And, like, I've always wanted a ministry partner, somebody, you know, who could be a small group leader. And so that was just really encouraging to see, like, Kristen, like, my girlfriend is connecting with, like, my two favorite students. Like, it just gave yeah. a, a nice picture of what, like, married life could be like, you know, in ministry. Yeah. Um, and then the other situation later was kind of similar. We had a girls' night at the youth group, so I'm there just, like, running I was sound. Like, Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Speaking of creepy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Talk yeah, for Kristen that. on that so, one. <laughs> some context. We had a guys' night one Saturday. The next Did week. Did you we, go to that? I did. I ran slides. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, we needed somebody to run slides. So guys <laughs> night, uh, and then the next week was girls night. So I just ran slides. I was a background person. Um, and Kristen spoke. I asked her to speak, and she just crushed it. Um, and, you know, just getting to hear her really, like, preach for the first time, you know, seeing all the girls, you know, like, love her preaching. That was another moment where I'm, like, clicking the slides, like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> so those two, like, moments, I feel like just confirmed the – um, the feeling, the, you know, the, the for sureness I had on our first date. Okay. You know? that, yeah. That's what I was going to ask. Is that, was there anything that like confirmed it? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Aww. So, oh, do you need a moment? No, that was just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So then this one, I'm not looking for anything like super deep, like profound necessarily, but what is something that each of you has always looked for in the other person that the other person has? That was kind of... Y'all know what I'm yeah, asking. Yeah. And it can't be something you've already said. Ooh, okay. Make it a little harder. What do, what, what do we always look for, for in somebody we want like, to date? Yeah, you know, that... I just always wanted X in yeah, someone. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, you know, Kristen has it or whatever. Yeah. But not... You've said you look for a ministry partner, someone who's athletic. Those... Like, what's... What's something, something that's already been said? Yeah, okay. You go first. Okay. Yeah, so I've always had, like, a short list. Um, I wanted somebody who obviously had a relationship with Jesus. You know, you could just see Jesus in them and through them, and then they clearly bear fruit in their lives. So that was the most important thing. Yeah. And then also, I, I said athletic already, but yeah. I really wanted somebody who, like, loves sports, yeah. and basketball is a huge part of my life, so somebody, you know, who enjoyed that. Um, and somebody who was smart, because, like, I'm not the smartest book, oh. book, book person. And so it is nice to have a very smart female who can, you know, help me out, you know, as a helper. Uh, he I wanted... has a lot. He's street smart. He oh, wants yeah. to give himself a... I'm not. Yeah. Which, it's, so it's, so a it's a great, great pair. Yeah, yeah. It's a good balance. Yeah. 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 See, yeah. opposites attract. Yeah. See, there we yeah. go. Next uh, week, y'all tune in yeah. for that episode. <laughs> You're welcome for that. Yep. Um, and then I wanted somebody who was funny. And Kristen's not like you know, throwing comedy out there, but, but she's, she's good to laugh she's, at. She, that is true. Very good to laugh at, but <laughs> she's, sorry. she's very resist. reactionary funny. Yes. Um, can I tell a short story sure. about that? You can tell a long story. Yeah. This we the, got all the time in the fantastic. world. Fantastic. This is a short story. <laughs> okay. So just her being very reactionary funny. So I was door dashing one day, like driving around, you know, picking up food, trying to make oh, some you extra were, money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so I go to this seafood place, uh -huh. and I can see the order the person has, and it was crab legs, hush puppies, and a cheesecake, which sound delicious. Okay. Crab legs is my favorite meal. Oh, okay. So I'm waiting for this order, and I screenshot it, and I sent it to Kristen. And I was kind of joking, but I was like, I feel like I'm really tempted to steal this food right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Kristen is such a rule follower. She texts me back immediately in all caps. Don't you dare. <laughs> And then about 10 seconds later, I get another message, different text, and it says, but if you do, I'll take the cheesecake. <laughs> That's true. So, That's hilarious. Yeah, I always wanted somebody that was funny. 
And then obviously wanted somebody that was pretty um, because like I feel like an attraction, a physical attraction is very important in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So preferably I, I do like blondes. Kristen is blonde. So I was like, wow, that's nice. Um, <laughs> and then I, I realized a little bit a couple months before we started dating. Yeah. Uh, the Enneagram test, I'm really big on that personality test, like getting to know yourself better. I realized you're a three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So I realized every close person in my life is a two, Mm -hmm. an Enneagram two, like all my friends, all my close guy friends are twos. All my close friends that are girls, they're twos. Is she? And Kristen is a two. Uh, Okay. So that was something I said a couple months before we started dating. Like, man, I think I'm going to end up with a two. And so what was are it, you? I'm a four. Okay. So, four. yeah, I didn't want to, like, I, I wasn't going into the <laughs> our first date, like, yeah. I need an Enneagram two. If she's not, I'm out of here. I'm done. But I was like, I'm hoping she's a two. I'm hoping. And okay. I remember asking the question. She said two. And in my head, I'm like, score. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So did you always want to be with a four? N- nah, I not, never thought I don't know. That. Okay. Thought I thought I would end up with... Um, I, well, I thought he was a seven. I know this doesn't mean much. It doesn't to you, at all. The Enneagram people. I thought he was a seven, um, based on what I knew about him. But fours and sevens are apparently pretty similar. Yeah, seven is like my second. Yeah. Highest. So, um, like life of the party, super fun. You know, whatever. Um, or an eight, because I have a lot of eights, and eights and threes are the most common people in my life and they're okay. the very strong dominant personalities and i figured because i didn't have that that i would end up with somebody okay like that so but your wing is a three right yes okay yes. so i thought um so yeah sorry i didn't mean to take off your was that all you no, that was it, was that that was it? it? yeah yep. sorry i got us distracted on no, that. No, no, no. i don't <laughs> um oh gosh okay i feel like i've said a lot of my like jesus on that relationship with jesus he was six three. Um, I mean, other than that, you don't really have many. Things. I started to say that's what it came down. Does he love Jesus? <laughs> and is he taller than me? Um, I think I really wanted somebody who was confident. That was really important to me. Somebody who their security did not depend on me. Mm. Um, and that was something I picked up about Kevin from our first date. Like he was, he wasn't cocky. And like the oh you think you're the crap like that he did not give off that vibe at all but he was very like sure of himself and confident in who he was and that was really attractive to me um and then also he was he had that really outgoing personality he was the life of the party because yeah. I'm not that way I like attaching myself to people like that <laughs> for social settings so that I can kind of walk in like Oh, he's it. Everybody talk to him. And if you want to talk to me, because I'm with him. I'll be over here. I'll be over here. And if you don't, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Like, I will happily drink my Diet Coke in the corner and observe. And it's fine. And so, um, that was something that was... And, man, we really keep alluding to this episode next week. Y'all really... We're going to hype it up more than we probably should. Seriously, I didn't see this coming. (laughs) I didn't either. But I think because I really thought that... I would always end up with somebody who was super outgoing and had a big personality, but I had never really dated anybody like that before. Okay. And so, and people who were close to me always kind of said like, yeah, Chris and I picture you being with somebody who's like really outgoing and loud and funny. And, and that had just never been the case with anybody else that I had dated. And so when I figured out, well, I knew that about Kevin already, but he was still that way. <laughs> Whenever we <laughs> yeah. went out, I was like, oh, this this is what I've been mm. wanting. And I was really excited about that. Okay. And that has proven to be very fun. He's gotten me to do a lot of things that I never would do if it weren't for him pushing me to because I'm so safe and yeah, like roller coasters and okay, watching well, horror movies. Well, you know, some of the things I know I'm not going to like and I do them anyways. <laughs> and then other things I've tried, I'm like, oh, I really like this. Um, yeah. Yeah like watching marvel like i never would have watched marvel well that was part of the conversation before we started recording um (laughs) but yeah i'm it's been fun to like be with somebody like that who's just a little more spontaneous and adventurous and stuff (laughs) like that so yeah that's something i've always looked for that he has i love it okay so then flip side what is something 
either you never thought to look for in another person or even, or it could be two things, whatever, or even something that you actually thought you did not want in a person. You're like, oh, I really don't want to date someone who's blank, but the other person is, and you're actually glad of it. I know your answer, Oh but wow, you go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, they just like looked at each other with this like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not really sure where this is going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I really thought that I was going to end up with an extrovert. Because okay. I am so extroverted. Uh-huh. Uh, for my Myers Briggs fans, uh, the personality text, test, I am a 97% extrovert. Whoa. So, yeah, I love people. And so I just, like, I don't really like to be alone. Um, okay. So I thought, like, ending up with, like, a super introvert, or int- introvert they were going to be like, no, I don't want to be around you <laughs> right lie. now. And I'm going to be like, why? <laughs> like, I'm great. Uh, <laughs> so on our first day when she told me she was an introvert, that's where I was like, oh, oh. Because I, I dated, you know, an introvert before. Okay. And it didn't really go very well. <laughs> and But on our first date, she gave me that confidence where she was like, uh, no, I'm introverted and I make sure like I spend time by myself so that I don't get, you know, burnt out of being around people so okay. much. And then she told me she worked from home. So she had already done the prep work on herself to know okay. so much about herself where she was like, not gonna, you know, oh, I don't want to be around you right now. I need my introverted time. <laughs> and yeah. we haven't had any problems about introvert extroverted stuff at all Mm -hmm. um and it is kind of nice being you know that loud extrovert i don't have to compete with Mm -hmm. the person i'm dating you know it would be kind of strange i feel like if she just walked to a party like hey everybody and i'm like that's my job yeah that's that's me Uh, (laughs) (laughs) so it's worked out great so that's something like i thought you know, I was going to end up with an extrovert, but yeah. I think, uh, you know, an introvert, extrovert is kind That's of... That's a big one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other cool. things I didn't know that I needed uh, is, like, a very organized person and a very, like, tech-savvy person. So I am not very tech-savvy. Like, this <laughs> really? microphone... No, I'm not. I would not have guessed that. I mean, I don't know why, but I thought... He's... You would have been like, you know all the stuff, I would have thought. He knows a lot. He doesn't... Uh troubleshoot well yeah no i think okay. so like he knows how to operate things okay. he's not like you know my parents <laughs> yeah um no one is no parents. one is my parents but he like if there are problems he's like hey it person please come help me yeah gotcha. and so it is nice to yeah. have an it person you know that i'm marrying uh, <laughs> when i do have it problems so I didn't know I needed that or wanted it, but I'm like, that, that's, a, that's a bonus. That's some perks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. There you go. Yes, ma'am. What is yours? Oh gosh. Um, well, playing off of his, did you want... You've kind of more wanted to be with someone who was extroverted, yes, right? Yes, I so did want to be... you kind of... You wanted that yes, difference. The one thing that... And maybe this is... Uh, oh. Here's a good one. We okay. can kind of tie these in. Um, I think that... And maybe I had started thinking about it right before we started dating, but just somebody who is very self-aware and does a good job of like learning about themselves. I never really thought to like articulate that that was something I was looking for. Okay. But that was something, again, from our first date, I learned, I was like, wow, he's very in tune with who he is, what he, his strengths are, what his weaknesses are, what, how he's wired. Like he's done the work to figure this out and he's very like self-aware, which I appreciate. And so that was, um, oh, I have a second one too. Okay. (laughs) But I didn't the one thing I was worried about with being with an extrovert, because I did want to be with an extrovert. I, I'm like, if I'm with an introvert, we will never leave our house. And I did not want to have <laughs> that kind of a life. I wanted somebody to kind of pull me out of my comfort zone and make me be social and stuff like that. Um, but I was worried that if I was with an extrovert, he wouldn't understand when I did need my alone time. Okay. And he wouldn't be able to be like show empathy with uh-huh. that. And... I think it was within the first month of us dating that I'd had a crazy week. I had been gone for like seven days in a row, having to like go to all these places and do all these things. And one of his students had a, uh, she turned 16 and invited Kevin and me. I hadn't met her yet at this point, but invited Kevin to her birthday party with a bunch of people from the youth group and her family and everything. 
and they said I could come. Okay. Well, I was so exhausted, just not just physically, but like mentally, I yeah. was tapped out. And I didn't want this to be the first time I met these people oh, because I yeah. knew they were so important to him and um, he had known them for so long. And so I had told him, I was like, I just, I don't think this is a good time for me to go. And he was so great about okay. it. Okay. And that gave me so much relief and confidence of like, <laughs> yeah. okay, like, yes, we're different, but he is making a point to understand and to show maybe sympathy is a better word since he doesn't he's not technically wired that way but he was really gracious with me and that yeah. so that was a big deal um That's and then good. another thing i just thought of is he's so attentive like he remembers okay. everything and sometimes that can be a bad <laughs> thing but most of the time it's most really of the time it's good yeah most of the time it's good because i'll tell him stuff and he'll be like oh yeah when you did so and so i'm like oh my gosh you remember that or like things about my my high school basketball career or like just random stuff i'm like oh you're actually listening to me and he'll you know i like when you speak oh thanks babe um (laughs) but just like different things that he remembers was like oh he's actually because i feel like guys get the bad rap of like oh they're never listening to us and Mm. he does a really good job of listening and like paying attention to what i'm saying and then actually acting on those things of like when i say i like things when i say i don't like things okay like he applies it so that would be my answer see it it just took me a minute i knew there were things (laughs) but yeah that would be my answers to that okay so now sorry i just kind of like it's like okay you're done talking no i am done that's That's sorry that's great no that's great (laughs) enough of that keep it moving keep it moving no so I don't know if you know, Kevin, so we, we've done these men tell all episodes before we'll have a guy on and we've always asked, we ask them all kind of the same general set of questions Okay. each time. And it's, it's obviously not these cause it's just one guy on for that. But one thing we always ask them at the end is like, okay, so if you, cause our audience is primarily female and okay. so we say, okay, guys, if you could give girls one piece of dating advice, like, what would it be? Like, what would be one thing you as a guy would want girls to know? So I'm setting that up to say, this is kind of a play on that question for y'all of, okay, so now you're engaged. What would one piece of like dating advice be? I guess for you can put your heads together and come up with one piece of dating advice for the both of you or each of you, however you want to do it. But like, what would one thing you would tell people now be? You go first because I know you wrote your answers and I'm thinking. Well, she said one thing. I have like four things. That's great. She can think longer. I can think longer. So share all of them. Oh, share all yeah, of them? Yeah, yes, go please for it. share okay. all of them. Yeah, so my biggest dating advice, um, kind of a little bit what we've talked about for the first one, is like do work on yourself to learn more about yourself um, so that you know what you want in a relationship. If you will know like your own identity and what your tendencies are and why you do certain things that you do, how can you pick you know, a potential life partner if you haven't done that previous work yeah. on yourself. So I've tried to, you know, learn about myself as much as possible, personality tests, why I do the things I do, what are some, you know, traumas I have from childhood, things like that, so that I'm more able to pick, oh, this is what I would want in a significant other. So do some work on yourself, learn about yourself is number one. Uh, number two, and this one is going to hurt. This one's going to sting a little bit. Uh, you have to be patient. I mean, Jesus spent 30 years on this earth just waiting for his ministry to start. And some of us don't want to wait six months for a dating relationship. So, yeah, that stings, and it's hard to be in that waiting season, but you have to wait for the person God is, you know, prepared for you. So don't settle just because you're getting frustrated on the waiting season. Mm. The waiting season yeah. is hard. It's It can be long, but it's worth it in the long run. Yeah. Uh the last one, or the third one is, um, you have to be content in your relationship with Jesus before you start dating somebody else, because a lot of people think that oh, a person, my a significant other, will will satisfy me and satisfy everything in my life, all the holes in my life will fill that, but that's just not true. Only Jesus can do that. So if you're not content in your singleness and your relationship with Jesus before you start dating, you're gonna have problems. Mm-hmm. One point of clarifying there. What you're saying is when you are content, you're not looking for someone else to fulfill you because Jesus does that, Mm. right? Yes. What you're not saying is if you'll be content, then God will give you someone. This if then Mm -hmm. like 
Yeah. Because we talk about that a lot. Of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because you, you hear all of the time, oh, well, if you're just be content and being single, then, like, it's almost like the thing, like, okay, God, I'm content. I'm sitting here. I'm content. Like, where's my person? And I just want to clarify for yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, I knew that's not what you were saying. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. It's not what he means. <laughs> amen. Amen. Preach it. Love it. Um, and then my last one, I say this all the time, like, you are never too busy to do anything in life. Mm. Um, and so a lot of times I hear people say, like, in terms of dating, like, oh, that other person, they're just not putting in any effort. They just tell me they can't, like, text me or call me or see me. They're just not putting in that effort. Like, you're not too busy to do anything. And so if the other person you're trying to date or talk to is not putting in that effort, then you probably shouldn't be talking or dating <laughs> them. Because with Kristen, it's been so great, even though we've been in busy seasons as we've dated, you know, coaching basketball teams and youth group, and she's got a podcast and family and friends. Like, she's clearly made an effort, you know, to, to spend time with me, to text me, and I feel like I've done the same thing. Um, and so you have to be willing to put in the effort. And if the other person isn't, probably isn't the right fit. Yeah. First of all, I agree with all of that. Um, so ditto Good. to Good. everything he said. <laughs> um, I think this is like asking me to culminate the last four years and then my relationship <laughs> and like pick one thing. Um, I didn't say this was going to be easy. That's true. <laughs> well, I mean, you could go out. That's, that's something right there is I think – was it you and me that Bethany that were talking about this, that just because something is difficult doesn't mean it's not worth doing. Mm -hmm. And I think like, if you've been listening on here for any amount of time, y'all know who the hopeless romantic is in this partnership. Okay. And it is me and thank the Lord for Bethany and her practicality that brings me back down to earth. (laughs) But I had so many, you know, just, butterfly ridden expectations of how it was going to be when I met my husband. And like, I mean, Kevin is so much of what I prayed for and so much more. And I love him so much. And there have been so many like amazing things that have happened since we've been together. And then there have also been some really difficult moments that we have walked through. And, um, you know, I think that I was, I'm reading or I'm listening to a book about, I can't even remember the title of it, but it's basically like debunking myths about marriage and Shanti Feldhahn that wrote for women only that we recommend on here all the time. She wrote the book and she's basically realizing that the 50% divorce rate is not actually true. Mm. It's projected, but it, we've never actually reached it. And so she's been interviewing all these married couples about like, how happy are you? And like, Uh do you think your marriage is going to work and all of this stuff? And she's basically found that if you go into your marriage with the expectation that it's going to work, that's oftentimes enough to keep you together. It's when one or Mm. both of you starts thinking like, I don't think this is going to last. Like that's, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Interesting. And so like going into my relationship with Kevin, especially when, I mean, like you said, we knew pretty early on. I'm like, this is it. Like, this is who I want to marry. And it's not your whole mindset changes from when you're dating. It's like, Oh, maybe this will work out. Maybe it won't. And it's like, now you find your person. It's like, no, this is it. And like, there is no, if it doesn't work, it's, we're going to, I want to make this work with you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, whatever that takes. And so I think that would be my, one of my biggest pieces of advice is just like just because something's difficult doesn't mean it's not worth doing and especially when it comes to I'm not married yet I'm not gonna pretend I know anything about marriage okay <laughs> I've I've tried very hard not to be that girl it's gonna be like oh I'm engaged now let me tell you all the things like I, I'm i learning I have no clue I tell Kevin all the time I'm like I don't know what I'm doing I've never done this before <laughs> I've never done this before and but I think that the best things in life are worth doing even when they get difficult. And Mm. so just because you are going to have conflict, just because you're not going to see eye to eye all the time, just because you're going to have to be selfless and submit (laughs) and do things that you maybe wouldn't have to do if you were single. It doesn't mean that it's not worth doing those difficult things to, you know, ultimately 
be in a relationship with the person yeah. that you love for the rest of your life. So I think that's so good on both of y'all's part. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Okay. So I have a couple qu- questions left and these are not like for both of y'all. So Kristen, this one's for you. Okay. okay. So I just thought this would be fun. So y'all know up until this point, we've always been super vague when we're talking about dating <laughs> on the podcast. We don't, you know, we've said from the beginning, like we have this platform and we put stuff out there, but the guys we date, whether it works out or not, they don't like, they don't have that. So we're not going to come on here and just like give you all the gory details when they don't like, that's not fair to them. One for their privacy, but also too, like they don't have the recourse to then tell their side of the story either. So we're very vague, very in the past too. Like we don't Mm -hmm. talk about people that we're currently dating while we're currently dating them really. Most of the time. (laughs) Most of the time. (laughs) So Kristen. Yes. Tell us, over the past year, the last season, really, mm-hmm. you would talk about, oh, yeah, I dated this guy one time, or, oh, yeah, there was this guy that I was seeing, and you would tell a story, and I knew you were talking about Kevin, but nobody else did. So now, <laughs> for the people listening, do you want to tell us some of those, oh, hey, remember when I told this story? Well, yeah, I was talking about Kevin. Oh, absolutely. Because <laughs> it was so fun when we were... Uh, we had been dating for, we started dating in June, so the season started in September. So he listened to a few episodes. He's like, oh, I heard you say this about me today, but you didn't say my name. And I'm like, nope. You were on to her. Because oh, yeah. I was on the, it. the rule is you have to be engaged before you get named. So, sorry, you will be nameless for the time being. Um, so I already said the throwing up, almost throwing up in the Lowe's parking lot and the pacing before the first date was about Kevin. Um If you go back and listen to, you actually made this comment earlier, which is what made me think of this, but if you go back and listen to the season seven premiere, uh, which was my, you want to be with somebody who wants to be with you, like my mantra episode, I talked, I say, someone close to me once told me that you're (laughs) never too busy, what I wrote down the actual quote, you're never too busy for something, like that's a myth because we all make time for what's important to us. And Kevin told me that on our first date okay and that really stuck with me and I was like oh this is good advice I'll share this with our people but he won't get credit for it so (laughs) I think that was the first time he was like excuse me you told people this and I said that and I don't get credit I'm like sorry now you have now you get the credit (laughs) so he did say that I was not my you know it wasn't just some random person um when we talked about I can't remember if it was a couch cast or if it was the What is Love episode that was uh-huh. the finale of last season where we talk about saying I, who says I love you first. Yes. And I made the comment that there had been a time where I had said I love you first. And that was okay. with Kevin. That's literally the only time I've ever done it. Um, every other time I responded. And so that was <laughs> uh, one of the most nerve wracking moments of my life. But I did tell him I love you first. So that was about him. That was a good day. <laughs> You like that day? It was was good. (laughs) Yes. Um, And then the another one was (laughs) the dating and social media episode we did last season, where I talk about we're talking about the perks of social media when it comes to dating. And one of the points I made was social media is a great way to like reconnect with somebody from your past or from somebody who maybe you're interested in dating now that you weren't before. And it was a very vague way of me basically telling the story of how Kevin and I started dating. Uh, Cause that's exactly what happened. We kind of saw each other on social media and that's what prompted the, you know, him sliding into my DMs. Um, so yeah, so there are probably there are several more. I'm sure those were the ones that I was able to like remember and find. But he was definitely woven throughout the season, <laughs> um, and I think there were a couple times I like messed up and said his name, and Bethany had to go cut it. Yes. Um, but yeah, he he. There were some Easter eggs. That's funny. Or there are your Easter eggs, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I told him I feel like those Marvel like YouTube video people who like go through and watch. The trailer, and then they're like, "Oh, did you notice this? And you notice that? And you notice this? That I get to do that now for like you, <laughs> y'all go back and listen to season seven, and you can hear like, oh, when she was talking about this, I wonder if that was about Kevin. <laughs> so yeah, that was that. Okay, so next question then is for Kevin. Oh yay! So now, Kristen's kind of already told her side of this, and we'll see the video, but we want to hear about the proposal from your perspective. Ah, fantastic. so Kristen has told it like she told on a previous episode, like here's what it was, here's what happened, all this stuff. Mm. But let's hear about 
what was going on in your mind. <laughs> yes. So the proposal. So I go buy the ring. Um, Good start. And it was very, it was very quick to buy a ring. Like I was in there less than ten minutes. I was like, wow. Whoa. I feel like that should. Is that take, typical? I don't know. Okay, I don't. Know I was either. expecting to be in there for hours. I planned <laughs> yeah. like a full day. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wow, that took seven minutes. <laughs> that was very nice. Uh, so, so you're kind of shopping, huh? <laughs> yeah. So then I was planning on doing it around December 18th ish. Okay. Um, when Melanie was going to be in town right. for Christmas so that like, you know, one of her best friends could be there. And I, uh, you know, asked them, ask her parents, uh, and you know, they were very gracious and said yes. And I was like, fantastic. So I, and her dad is the athletic director at the school she coaches at and went to high school. So I knew I wanted to do it in the gym. So I asked him if the gym was available that weekend. He told me yes. Come to find out, this. come to find out a couple of days later, the gym was booked already for like a church conference the whole week. And I'm like, that's unfortunate. That's not how this <laughs> is supposed to go. So then trying to come up with plan B mm -hmm. uh, was very frustrating because I was like, plan A was so good in my head. <laughs> um, and so talking with like her mom and Bethany and Melanie and her sister, like what, what's the best plan B? Well, they convinced me on a Monday, all of them, <laughs> that the best plan B was to do Friday. Like four days from now. Like four days from now instead of three weeks from now. We're like, when you I got planned this. It. And I was very nervous. I'm like, I don't want to procrastinate. <laughs> I remember. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Pause. I yes. want to answer yes. one part of this yes. whole. So I remember the first time when you called me and you got off the phone, we got off the phone. I went and I was talking to Lindsay. I went in to talk to Lindsay and she actually had Melanie on FaceTime. They were FaceTiming each other. And I think they knew you were going to call me or whatever. So we were talking and I was like, I was like, I think he can pull it off, but he's freaking out. y'all. Like we've got to like <laughs> help him like bring it down a little for his own sanity. <laughs> it's so cute. It was really oh funny. He's God. like, okay, okay, okay. I was like, just take a deep breath. Yeah. It'll be okay. <laughs> Bethany was very helpful. I had like seven phone calls just that Monday night. Oh yeah. my God. That was another day, my extrovertedness. I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Anyway. Well, and what was so funny too is I called him and he kind of rushed me off the phone. I wanted to talk to him. Like, night. excuse and it was me. like 10 p.m. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to go to bed. I'm like, you never go to bed at 10 p.m. I'm like, what? And I was kind of annoyed. I'm like, I had like three more people to talk yeah, to. Yeah. I'm about. like, okay, fine. I'll go to bed. But I literally went to bed kind of like frustrated with him. And then it all made sense. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so. So in four days, we're going to pull off this proposal uh, during the Varsity Girls basketball game that Christian coaches at halftime. Uh, so we're trying to get all the details done. Like I had practice that night for my team. I canceled it. And all my guys were like, that's awesome. No practice. Uh, so I you know, told Chris and I was at practice and I couldn't make the game. So I end up driving from where my practice was supposed to be all the way out to her school. Um, and then hid at this upstairs area <laughs> where she couldn't possibly know I was there. Yeah. Her, literally everyone in the gym knew except, what was yeah. happening. Yeah, except because for Kristen. We, she still, so Melanie was going to be in town three weeks later. Yeah. And so I called Mel after I talked to you, I think, and I was like, okay, we've got to get you here somehow. So Kristen is still thinking Mel's coming in three weeks. Yeah. And we, some, like in the matter of two days, we were like, no, drive from Florida, like, who cares if you're moving in three weeks and you have a toddler, like we're going to make this happen. Yeah. And so we're trying to hide her. Yeah. Well, and what was funny too, was that Wednesday night after youth group, I had asked Kevin when Melanie was coming in a few weeks, if he could come to the movie night that we were going to have, oh, she was going to yeah. be there. And he said he couldn't because he had a game that night. And, <laughs> and that is true. Yeah. And he, which he did. And he was going to have to drive the bus. So he couldn't leave the game. And I started crying. <laughs> As I'm like, I just want you to spend time because I knew we were probably about to get engaged. I'm like, yeah. I want him because him and Melanie had only FaceTimed at that point. Yeah. So I'm like, I want you to spend time with Melanie in person. And like, this is really important to me. This is just so frustrating. And like, I literally am sitting there crying in the car. And he's like, it's going to be fine. I'm like, be oh, we'll okay. figure it out. We can see her the next day. We can meet her for breakfast. Whatever you want to do. And I like, know she's fine. coming in literally two days. Coming yeah. in two days. <laughs> for and, the proposal. And I'm just a wreck. So That's awesome. He, again, going back to the gullible thing. Like, yes, it's very it, Comes Wait. in handy for you. Yes. yes. It's great. Yes. It's Easy. great for the people who love me. It's not fun for me. Yeah. Well, it ends up being fun, but not, yeah, the, not, not the moment. Not the lead up. Yeah. So we got a bunch of family there on my side and her side there. All of her friends. Uh, Melanie drove up from Florida. I got 
uh, a friend of mine to drive my youth group bus and got 20 <laughs> students there. And so we're all, all just hiding during the first half, and I'm very nervous. And it made me really nervous because I didn't know what the score of the game was and how much time was left. Like, I couldn't see the clock. And not knowing that made me nervous. Like, we were going to miss it or something. And so... <laughs> You're one moment. You, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nobody came and got yeah. me. And so Kristen's sister, Danielle, was texting me. Okay, two minutes left. 145. Oh, there's a timeout. Oh, there's a free throw. Oh, hold on. Oh, minute 12. And I'm like, gosh, this is taking a long time. So I was really nervous. And so halftime comes. Um, and do you want to talk? To, have you told about your dad? Oh, yet? my gosh. My dad did not follow instructions at all. My dad was literally supposed to take us in the locker room at halftime, which he never does. But so he starts meeting with the team on the bench. And my, oh, yeah, I forgot and my mom this. keeps the book. And so she's sitting there and I'm talking to my mom and she's looking at my dad. Giving, I was like, get <laughs> like trying to like be subtle but not and he's like oh yeah he's like we're gonna go to the locker room so we go to the locker room and i noticed halftime was a lot longer than normal i'm like what are we doing here like are we running are we early like whatever so i go to the locker room and dad was supposed to just talk to the girls for a little bit send them out first so that they could see what was going on and then like ask me a question to keep me occupied and then i was gonna come out <laughs> well, then we get in there and he comes up to me and he's like, what do you, do you have anything you want to say? I'm like, well, I don't like our defense. And he was like, okay, we'll go for it. So I march up to the board and I'm like telling them all this stuff about they need to do for defense. And then I apparently talk too long because my dad kind of cuts me off. And I'm like, well, that's rude. You asked what I wanted to share and now you're cutting me off. And he's like, okay, we got to go. We'll let y'all shoot. Uh, Kristen, you're needed outside. And I'm like, oh, God, excuse I'm, me, what? I'm like, what? I'm like, does my mom like? Did my mom break her phone again? Like, what's happening? Like, does she need IT help? That's literally the first thing I thought. And so I walk out first, and the first thing I see is all of these students with their phones pointed at me, and I'm like, what is happening? And then I look, and people start clapping, and Kevin is standing <laughs> at center court with rose petals and the "Marry Me" marquee signs. And I just am like, holy crap, what the <laughs> heck is happening? So, yeah, my dad did not follow instructions yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it still worked out. It worked yeah. out great. But now he the, he wasn't supposed to have me talk to the team. So I will give him credit for that because the horn, like they were honking the horn on the well, he scoreboard. Took yeah, and I didn't know because I normally go out and check the time. Yeah. I would have seen if yeah. he distracted me so I wouldn't do any of that, which yeah. was good. But other than that, no, yeah. he didn't follow instructions. But it all worked out good, <laughs> so yeah. it was fine. Yeah. And so once I – so we got all the family, friends, and the youth group, you know, up on the balcony. I'm standing at center court. And that's when I did wasn't nervous anymore. Okay. And I stood out there for like five minutes, and everybody was like, yes, How, it's you were so, so nervous. I'm like, no, like I grew up on a basketball court. Like That's where I felt like I was at home. Like, <laughs> yeah, this I know. Yeah, yeah. And people started kind of cheering at one point. I'm like, this is awesome. Oh. And so I just waited five minutes for her to come out, and then she came out. Um, she walks over, uh, almost trips. Yeah, almost <laughs> slips on the rose petals. would have been something if oh she Oh, my did. gosh. Um, I would have ended up on America's Funniest Videos. Yeah, yeah. I 100% would have. Yeah. Or TikTok or something. Yeah. And then, you know, I just told her all the things that I love about her and uh, some other sweet things. And then got down on one knee. And, you yeah, know, now we're here. There we now, go. Yeah. Here. Now you get to be on the podcast. Yes. Finally. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I've been waiting. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it was, we'll, I love it. We'll post the video. But yeah. It was, it was adorable. It, literally perfect. It could not have, he couldn't have done anything differently. Like, it was so perfect. Love it. Okay. So, last question. Last Kristen, question. Kristen, this one is for you. Okay. So, let's just talk about weddings for a minute. Oh, yeah. Because we know this is what the girls are dying to hear about. Oh, Kevin, yeah. you can leave if you want or whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm kidding. We'll stay. We'll stay. <laughs> I want the full podcast experience. Okay. So, what has been your favorite part of planning? Least favorite? Just favorite thing? Detail? Just quick favorite part about the wedding planning process? Um, hmm. My favorite part is now that I know all the big decisions are pretty much okay. made, that I feel like I'm enjoying it more. The very <laughs> beginning of it was extremely stressful because we, the engagement will end up being just shy of five months. And we basically lost December because of the holidays. Yes. Like everything was closed. Nobody was doing tours. Nobody was doing anything. Um, so we basically are planning this wedding in four months. And so now that we know like, oh, we have someone who can bring the food and we have a photographer, yeah. like we have a place to have the wedding like that. I feel a lot better about. And so I feel like I'm enjoying it more now that it's just executing things. Yeah. Um, my favorite 
Oh gosh, my favorite detail. I mean, I I can't say too much because he's here. But I know that's I realized favorite, as I was writing. My it, favorite like, thing is about it right now is my dress. Okay, well besides besides that, I know. Um, oh gosh, I think we're just figuring out some ways to like do some really like personal stuff. Okay. Um, which I've always wanted to do, like to have some things that are kind of just different from what you see. Uh huh. Um. So we're incorporating, like, pictures of us at the wedding. There's going to be, like, um, just some things with, like, our new last name on it. Or my new last name. Oh, I didn't know any of that. That's awesome. He doesn't. (laughs) doesn't, I've got to, like, go. He's been very, like, involved with some things. And then when it comes to decor, he's like, whatever you want. I don't care. And that's where all, like, the personal stuff kind of got to come in. That's cool. Um, So I'm just – but I'm really excited. And I haven't done – this at all yet but like we're gonna write our own vows and that's one thing I have always wanted okay to do. and so I'm I did have a dream a couple weeks ago that I forgot to write them <laughs> and it comes down to like the point of the ceremony and Melanie has your vows for whatever reason so she hands them to you and I look at her I'm like Mel I forgot to write my vows like, oh my gosh. <laughs> she's like you're a writer just wing it I'm like I can't <laughs> So that was terrifying, but I'm, oh. I'm very excited about that. Um, and just that really sweet, like personal moment, but it's been, it's been good. It has been a lot more stressful than I thought it would be. So just to not, y'all know, I hate bursting people's bubbles, but just to give you a realistic <laughs> expectation, it's way more fun to think about wedding planning when you're not actually having to plan one mm. by a timeline and a budget yeah. because makes sense. everything else is just like, when you're just looking at stuff on Pinterest, you don't have to know oh, how much does this cost? And are these people available on my date? And <laughs> you know, does this work with this? And I just pinned this. That's very, I just pinned this. It's very boho, but then this is very classic over here. And like, this doesn't match this. And I have to think about that. And like, what's my theme? I didn't know I needed to have a theme. Like there's just so, it's so fun so to be many things. like idealistic with it beforehand. Yeah. And then it feels like, Oh, we actually have to execute this. Yeah, like, I actually have to pick the one yeah. I'm going with. And everybody talks about how you have like decision overwhelm. Yeah. And that is a very real thing. But I think what's kind of surprised me, because I've had a few people say like, oh, I could totally see Kristen being a bridezilla, um, <laughs> which is fine. Like I'm not offended by that, but I real like I've almost gone the other direction and that there hasn't really been anything I've been like. Not anything, but there haven't been as many things I've been adamant about as I thought there would be. I've been like, oh, yeah, I don't really know. Like, we went and met up with a florist. She's like, do you know what you want? I'm like, not really. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Um, or when we went and met with the – Kevin's family owns a bakery, so they're doing all of our cakes and desserts and everything. And she was like, do you know what you want? I'm like, I have no clue. I'm just hoping you could tell me. Like, what do I need to do? Yeah. Um, so it's been – I'm like, I'm probably the worst bride ever because I come in with no – ideas That's to some hilarious. of these meetings but it's been good I think I'm really not to sound like super corny or like holy but I'm just ready to be married yeah and I that, no, that makes sense I'm so excited like registering is often honestly been super fun because I'm like oh when we have our like place and like when I cook for you this is what I'll use <laughs> and, like this is what our like yeah. all the throw pillows we're gonna have on our couch oh, are Kevin. you so excited <laughs> Uh, I'm not super excited about the throw pillows. <laughs> Kevin has an aversion to throw pillows. It's yeah, that would fantastic. be my least favorite part of yeah. the wedding plan. <laughs> but that part has been fun to think about. Like, yeah, oh, what our life is going to be like once we're married and not just like... You always hear like, oh, the wedding's not the finish line. It's the starting point. You're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But it, <laughs> it, that really is kind of how my brain has shifted. Yeah. And it, that's, been, that's been fun that's and exciting. So, so It's coming along, y'all. It's... I'll be thrilled when it's April 28th and we're at the rehearsal and it's like, we're here. Everybody's here. This is it. This is it. We're We're doing it. We're going to be married and we're good. That's awesome. It's going to be fun. (sighs) I can't wait. I can't either. But I think that wraps up our questions for today. I think so. This was so fun. Yes, it was. Kevin, thank you for finally coming on the show. We've been trying (laughs) to make this happen for a while now. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's how we're going to end the day. Wow. Wow. No, I'm so glad we were able to do this. I'm glad our schedules aligned. Yeah, it's been so fun. Did yeah, you? Fun. Was it everything you dreamed it would be? It just being took on the too show? long to get on the show. <laughs> okay. I mean, it was a blessing being here, <laughs> but it just took way too long. Well, so sorry. I mean, that's <laughs> technically on you. So, 
I mean, you knew what it took to get on here. <laughs> and this has been looking for the middle. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna wrap. He's, he's gonna up. wrap it up there, guys. No, but really, I mean, I guess we are kind of yeah ready to wrap it up, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. We've had a blast. We will be back next week, like Kristen has alluded to, or I have, or whatever, a couple of times, with an episode on do opposites really attract. We're going to talk about that next week and kind of look into it. I think we have a couch cast between now and then, so. Be sure to check it out. We will be back next week. Until then, I'm Bethany. And I'm Kristen. And this is Looking for the Middle.